Hello and welcome to anyone who's watching this video. Um, I'm sure we've all seen uh, these cheap hand planes that you can get now. Number four, this one is, um, it costs just under £22 from Tool Station in the UK. And um, I'm curious as to whether you can actually buy a plane for £22 that that is viable. Um, so I've picked this one up, we'll unbox it, have a look at it and see if it's realistic or not. When you consider £22 in the UK, 20% VAT, um, it's been shipped all the way from China. Um, the retailer's taken money for it, it's taken money for transport and um, when it was in China it must have only cost about £10. So. Um, Let's have a look at it and see whether it's whether it is actually a usable plane. I'm trying to keep an open mind. Um, I'm not recommending that anybody buys one of these. It's just a, a video to to um, have a look at what you get for twenty two quid. picked this I didn't pick this particular one by accident um, the reason I picked it is because it's got wooden handles on it and it has it has a solid cast Y piece on it which kind of implies to me that they've tried not to cut too many corners but um, that's what you get there's no no name on it um, would imagine these are quite generic. They're probably rebadged as all sorts of things. Um, I can see straight away that there's daylight under the handle there, which, um, shall we say, is interesting. Um, the handle does move a bit. There is a bit of sidewards play in it. But generally speaking, it doesn't feel at all bad. The handle, although it's crudely finished and crudely made, actually feels okay. It's got a bit of weight to it. It's got an exceptionally big mouth in it, I would have said. That looks rather on the large side. Let's just flip the blade out and see what, see what we've got here. It doesn't look too bad. Seems to have been, seems to be relatively uh, well made. There doesn't seem to be much wrong with it. The chip breaker is doesn't look overly good. There's quite a big sort of bull nose on the end of there. So it'd be interesting to know whether that cat picks up the shavings and gets stuck. But generally speaking, it doesn't look too horrific. Um, the adjuster is just a piece of bent metal, but <clears throat> it's functional. And the adjuster wheel works quite well. The frog, I can see straight away, the frog isn't adjusted anywhere near right. Um, so light on it if possible. Yeah, you can see it there now. You can see that the frog is has been screwed down at a, a really odd angle and is totally in the wrong place. Um, <clears throat> but first impressions, it, it could have been a lot worse. Um, machine isn't too bad on it. Um, the edge of the castings have been cleaned up, or the, well, maybe they haven't. But the edge of the castings are quite smooth. I would imagine they must have been cleaned up a bit, but they've been painted. So what I'll do now is I'll um, I'll clean the oil off it, and um, I'll put it back together as is, and I'll just take it and see if it works. Um, 
see what those results are and then we'll strip it down a bit more and um, straighten the frog up and just see if sharpen the blade maybe adjust the chip breaker and we'll see what it works like then so I'll be back shortly okay we're back um, surprise to me is that it does actually you can actually bang wood with it out the box I haven't touched this at all other than wipe the grease off it and adjust it and it will actually take a shaving that they're not the best shavings but it does take a continuous shaving and um, <clears throat> I suppose if you were a DIYer and you'd got a door that was sticking I suppose you could chew a bit off with that um, I have noticed that the blade it, when it's in the right position to take a cut it's not quite square across the mouth but that might be the fact that the frog isn't in straight so I think the next thing I'll do is just sharpen the blade and um, we'll just do that and see what difference it makes then. I'll be back shortly. Right, we're back. Um, I gave it a quick sharpen. I still use oil stones. I, I'm old school and I've never really taken to diamond stones. I've, I've tried them but I'm just not, I'm not comfortable using them. I like to use a Mostly I use an Indian uh, combination stone, of course, and a fine. Um, so that's what I've sharpened it with. And to be honest, I, I'm really surprised that it, it that it planes that well. Um, it, there was a, there's a knot in that piece there, you can see, but it's planed off a, a, a shaving quite cleanly. The surface of the wood isn't, it leaves behind isn't too bad. And considering it's a 22 quid plane it's quite astonishing to me really but um we'll delve a bit deeper now we've 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 tried it out the box we've tried it sharpened so now we'll delve a bit deeper and see what's under the skin of it so this doesn't seem at all bad really um it seems to work okay threads are quite free on it and it's relatively sturdy. It's only light, but it's steel chrome. It's relatively sturdy. The finish isn't the best, but I don't suppose that matters really. So the blade itself, I'll just show you that. Um, there we go. The cap iron is is actually chromed steel which I'm not too sure about because it makes it slippy but um, when it, if that's moving around if you've got one of these I have seen on the reviews that some people say that the blades going back into the plane when they use it it might be just that this surface is too slippy and too shiny and it's not holding the blade so you could just rough that up with a bit of sandpaper the end like I said isn't, isn't sharp it's quite a blunt end to it and you'd think it'd catch the shavings, but it doesn't. So I'll leave that where it is for now. The blade itself was relatively, um, relatively square and not too bad flat, to be honest. I've just, I flattened it a little bit. You can see that very edge along there is flattened, but it's flattening on the, it's flattening on the point. Um, not here somewhere and leaving the, leaving the point not addressed. So the blade's the right way. And I'd give it a quick, I started with a coarse oil stone because there was a few nicks in it. I've just done it freehand um, with a coarse oil stone just to get the nicks out of it and then just dressed it up with a fine. And it's relatively sharp. Um, I'm just going to put a file on there and see whether it feels this. Yeah, it is hard. The blade is hardened. Uh, yeah, the blade is hard. I don't know how long it will keep its edge, but it is it is a hard blade, relatively. Right, so let's strip the rest of it out. Um, so I'll take that screw out of there. That thread seems quite nice. Um, let's take the frog out and have a look what we've got there.
Let's see whether it's machined under the frog or not. Those screws are actually quite smooth. I would have expected them to be um, a bit ropey, to be honest. But they are steel, they're just still electroplated by looking at them, so they look like they're brass, but they're not. So let's take this out. Oh, so we've got a we have got a fully machined frock and a fully machined bed, which is a real surprise to me at a plane of this cost. Um, that's not at all bad, um, in all honesty. Uh, it's got a good bearing surface there. It's a bit uneven on the end, but that's not the that's not the machining that's done that. Um, in the light it's not the machining that's caused the the issue it's been they've just run across the end of it with a you can see that's not square they've run across the end of it with a, an angle grinder and well with a probably on hand uh, grinding a bench grinder but um it's a bit log codded it has to be said but uh, that could be corrected but we'll we'll just leave it as it is and we'll see um uh, We'll see how it goes. This is just um, tin, but it's okay, it works, it's relatively okay. This operates quite well, not too bad at all. What I do like about it, and the reason I picked this one as being the cheapest one that I've picked, was the fact it's got a cast. Um, I don't think it's aluminium. Uh, it's some sort of alloy, um, rather than the pressed tin ones that are made out of two pieces, which really are crude. It looks like that thread's been glued in there with something, but I don't suppose that really matters. It just stops it winding out. Um, this, to be honest, this isn't badly machined at all. It, it really isn't, given its price point. Um, it's quite astonishing really. As I said, the, the main fault I can see with it is that this isn't square across here. But um, let's have a look at what we've got here now. So we've got four machined points on it, which it is again it is a good thing. Some of the cheaper ones don't have that, they're straight on the casting. So that's a kind of a good sign. Let's just take the handles off and have a look what's underneath there. Oh, the threads are okay, aren't it? Threads are okay. Yeah, and it has a traditional type of um nut screwed on a bar which again is quite surprising for a cheap one really um i might have expected that to be just a bolt or something uh the casting itself isn't really bad in all honesty um it's not a bad casting um the mouth is a little bit large but so mind the detail, it's sturdy. I mean, where these handles go and, and where the frog mounts, it's, it's plenty of metal in there. There's no screws or adjusters for the frog. Um, but you just have to set it up by hand. I can see a small step in the machining of the mouth there. Which, if I can catch something here, can you can just about see it there. There's a bit of a step in the machining of the mouth. So, in all honesty, it isn't badly made. It's it's surprised me. 
because uh, I, I went into it with an open mind but I, I feared the worst um, so I think what I'll do now is um, I'll take the castings and see if they're flat I'll put them on a on a flat plate and see and maybe rub some sandpaper and see whether they appear to be flat or not um, and then in two minds whether to just dress the end of that frog up or not not sure what to do about that. Let's just see if the frog sits in the in the bed without any uh, without any twist, because this is a is a test for the plane. If you if you've got a plane, any plane, old or new, is that you see that twist in there? You can hear it and you can see it. That means that the frog and the bed don't mate together. Um, and the problem with that is it, it can lead to a bit of vibration and flex when you're using it, if you're using it heavy. Um, it, the frog might start moving around. That might also be part of the problem with some of the people on the reviews that I've seen that are saying that the blade's moving back into the I don't entirely know what they mean, but they say the blade's moving back into the plane. Well, either the frog's moving back. They say they tighten it as much as they can, but either the frog's slipping back or the capping iron is slipping back on the blade. But because this is chrome and very slippy, it might be the capping iron that's moving around on the blade like that. So I'm gonna go and have a look now and just check the bed for square, um, see if I can get that just file that frog so that the twist isn't in it. Maybe have a look at the the fact that it's not square. Um, but the machining of it really isn't it isn't bad at all. Um, at its price point, it's quite astonishing, really. So I'll go and have a bit more of a fiddle. We'll go and check a bit more in depth as to what's going on, what's flat and what's not, and I'll come back and do a bit more. Okay, so we're back. Um, I've made a few minor adjustments. This was never about getting a uh, a twenty-two pound plane to work like a Lee, a Lee Nielsen or anything like that. It was just a matter of seeing whether a plane that cheap is viable. So I've made a few minor adjustments to it. Um, gone over the top. Um, I've filed the frog slightly. These faces here, I've just smoothed them out and filed them flat slightly. And got some light on it. Um, to clean them up and to take the twist out of the uh, where it sits on the plane so it's sitting in there stable now, it's not rocking around. I couldn't get the. That's out considerably out of square. Um, and it's not really feasible to square that up because there isn't, I don't think it, you've got enough metal in there to be honest. So I've, I've just gone with leaving that as it is but making it stable. So minor adjustments, just a little bit of filing on there just to take it so that it sits on the base and it's not rocking. Um, I've also found out the issue with the handle was the actual base of the handle wasn't flat so I've smoothed that off of the block plane and this surface here wasn't flat so I've just rubbed a file across that just roughly just to to get a bearing surface other than that I've just taken the corners off with a file you can see just took the sharp edges off and a bit of sandpaper around the top edges just to take the sharpness off it um, so it's not flat the bed but it sits flat on a plate so if you put it on a plate it sits flat it doesn't rock or twist so it lies flat but it's slightly I can get to see it yeah you can see it just about it's very slightly Oh well, you can just see some light under there. 
in its bank from, from there to there, slightly hollow. And also in the width. So if I can get, catch the light on it. You can see that it's hollow there as well. But it's kind of evenly hollow in the middle. You could probably spend the time putting that right, but that's not really the purpose of this video. So it seems to be working acceptably as it is. So we'll leave that there. The idea is just to do the minimum amount of adjustments to it, just to see if it's a, if at 22 pounds, it's viable. So we'll put this back together now and um, we'll set the frog up and have a look. We'll reassemble it all and uh, we'll see what it works like. As I said, you could go completely over the top with it if you wanted to, but that was never the purpose. Um, that was never the purpose of this video. If you were a serious, you know, woodworker, you, you wouldn't start with this one, but I suppose if you're completely skint and you're doing a bit of DIY at home, then um, you just want to take a shaving off a door or something, side of a door, and you just want to nip to the DIY shop and pick something up. This is more along the lines of that, to be honest. That's quite right. Let's take him out. Let's slacken that one off. Slacken that one off. Let's start him again and see how we're doing. That's better. If I was normally setting a frog up on a plane, my personal preference we haven't got much movement on that anyway, so that frog doesn't seem to want to move from there. So presumably Slots, there we go. The slots aren't very good. Which you could file it out a bit, maybe. And I think I might go and do that. I think I might go and file the frog slots out so that we've got a bit more movement. Because I'm not entirely happy with that. It's, um, it's these pieces in here, you can see how jagged the edges of those are and it's stopping the screw from moving backwards and forwards so I'll just go back into the garage and I'll file those out and then we'll have a better movement on it. Right we're back. Um, all I've done is clean those slots, those slots in the casting out slightly just with a round file. And now we've got a bit of movement in the frog which we didn't have before. So I think I'll just I'll just do this by eye and I'll show you how I would normally do it with a if I had a good plane. But with this one I just think I'm gonna play it by eye and see what we've got. So normally if I have a good plane I like to use a blade that's uh, relatively flat. I like to put it on there and I like it just to skim the casting there just to be slightly just so it's just clearing that. I like to slide it down the frog until it's just clearing the metal um, and I like to put my frog in. I know this is a preferential thing but personally um, it's 
catch the light on it. I like the frog to be in line with the bed there. Uh, the the interesting thing is that's how I that's my preference, but um, the uh, the Lee Nielsen I have you can't do that with it. It doesn't um, it doesn't cooperate and. Um, The frog is actually in front of the bed. Uh, it doesn't go that far back, but that's where I like them. So I can see there's a bit of a snag there now with when that blade, you know, don't use your sharp blade or use it before you sharpen it, but slide it down there. And you can just hear so that that's catching the metal there. As though the, um, the angle at the ground in the bottom of there isn't quite right, so it's catching on this very front lip here. So I think what I'll do is I'll just put the file in there. Um, I'll just get a needle file and I'll just follow the frog and just take that front edge of that mouth off so that it's sitting on that, so that it lines up. I think that's probably the best thing to do with it. So I think it's roughly where I want it, but I think I'll go and just make some adjustments to the um, to this to the to that bevel in there, and um, and then I'll come back if I'm happy with it, and we'll have another look at it. Right, we're back. I've uh, made those adjustments. I've just used a small needle file in there, just followed the face of the frog and um, just made sure there's no interference. If I can catch the light on there, you might be able to see what I've done. Um, yeah, there. So I've basically just that front edge there, that bevel isn't quite right on that casting. So I've just filed that very front edge off there. It wouldn't matter if you file the whole bevel, but just as this happens to be, it's just caught the front of it. It might be that you're catching the back of it. it just depends on where the angle's right or not. And that's how I like my frog. When you get the blade, you can slide it down the, down, down the frog, and it just goes through the bed flush without catching. And that's where I like them to be. So we'll reassemble it all and um, we'll see what we've got. And we'll see what, whether we're making minor adjustments, what sort of um, result we've had. Um, and then we can compare it to other options maybe. I'll just nip that up snug. That's firm now. I shall put the handle on the back. Make sure you screw that well into the casting because it, if it happens to just be on the last threads, um, sometimes it'll strip out. So make sure it's screwed well into there. And then we'll, we'll sort of nip it a little bit without going too far. See if it's starting to bite on this one first before we put the other one in. So I think that screws a little bit long. I think that's a bit long and it might be catching the bottom of the casting. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, I think that's slightly too long, so I'm just going to go and 
take a little bit off the end of that um, because I think it's bottoming out in the casting before it tightens the handle so I'll be back shortly right we're back I've just taken a uh, probably about two or three millimeters off the end of that thread um, it looks to me like the hole in the handle is perhaps a bit oversized so hopefully that will tighten up better now so we'll just try that on its own without the other one yeah that's biting now so we'll knock that back a bit when we get this one in So if you if you leave that one tight you might have difficulty getting this one to screw on which is the case let's have a look what's going on in there then eh? right I think what's happened is got a slightly cross-threaded on the end of that bar so we'll take that off and we'll have a look see what's going on okay let's just see if that wants to go on there yeah it fits all right so we'll go the other way around then. We'll try putting this one in first. Lift the handle up slightly so that it's got so that it can start without any interference and that's much better. We can check this now to see whether it's tightening. Which it seems to be tightening quite well. So we'll take this one back a bit. So that one's loose. And we'll put that other one back in. There seems to be a bit of an issue with the um, see what the alignment's like because they all have a bit of play in them none of them fit absolutely snug they rely on the screw and the wood biting into the casting secure handle and um, we haven't got any daylight through here now so we've got two secure handles and we're heading in the right direction one thing I did uh, do while I was in there as I got a file but a proper big file not not a not a uh, not a um, needle file and I just rubbed over that surface there just to make sure this, there was no burrs or snots just to make it sm uh, run smoothly so I'll put that back in and put the blade back together I 
just while we're on that subject, I like my um, tapping iron set back about, about that much, about two and a half millimetres. I don't like taking them too close personally. Um, I like them about there. So that fits together quite nicely. Could do with the edges taking, the sharp edges taking off the blade at some point. In. Don't over tighten those, they only need to be snug. If the blade's moving around, it's probably not that cause that's not tight enough, it's probably some burrs and, and stuff on the cutter that's allowing it to uh, waddle around a bit. So let's see if we can get some adjustment on it. That's just adjust that's adjusting that's got plenty of lateral movement from left to right. So we're good there. So personally I like to just get them sort of square. And then I like to back them off. And um, take the slack out of the adjuster, take them back a bit, bring them forward so the blade, I look at them, I don't uh, just see, start to see the blade and try to cut at that. One thing I do see people doing um, is they do this business where they wipe the finger over the uh, blade to see if it's starting to come through. I just, I just, it's not for me. I mean, if, if you did that with a blade, I'd sharpen, you'd shave a piece of skin off. So, um, I, I do it by sight. Um, don't rub your hands across them, it's really not a good idea. So if we look at that now, actually that blade isn't coming through the bed too badly. I can't quite, yeah, I never turn it that way. Um, that blade isn't coming through the mouth too badly at all for square. So it's not a million miles out, it's, it's more one way than the other, but as I said, it's, it is only a £22 plane. So now she's all sturdy and um, I'll set up, I'll go and try it. Um, I'll give it a good run on some timber and um, I'll come back and share the conclusion. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, we're back. Um, I've been and playing some wood up with it. Um, you can see by the, the shavings and the dust that's on it. I've run it over a few different types and widths. And to be honest, it's working surprisingly well. Um, it's planing like a champ, to be honest. Um, thin shavings. Thick shavings. It, it's it's uh, exceeded all my expectations. Um, I was I'd started this video with a an open mind as to whether it, you can actually buy a plane for twenty two pound and it it would be viable. And um, <clears throat> and I suppose the answer in its simplest sense as you can because this one works um you know you've got wooden handles they're not the best shape but they are comfortable um a little bit of tweaking uh, all the adjusters work nicely um the bed's not it's flat as in it doesn't rock on something but it's it's concave in its width and its length and I think that might be why it still planes okay because it's it's a con it's an e even concave 
in both directions and I think that explains why it does actually play it still planes even though it's not entirely flat um, so I, I wouldn't you know I can't recommend it to anybody um, to go and buy one but um, if if you just I don't know if you're at home and you need a plane maybe you need to take a bit off a door or something like that and you, you're not really into your woodworking but you just want to adjust something then I suppose it is it is feasible um, you know just for the odd one-off job where you want to take a, a slice off a door or a chamfer or something or just smooth a bit of wood off um, it does work I, I can't argue with the fact that it's you know it does actually work I don't think the blades the best um, but it's not rubbish it does it does sharpen um, and it is the same size as a Stanley blade so or a, a record blade so you could switch it out for one of those um, but generally I'm, I'm quite surprised to be honest um, I, I was kind of half expecting it to be completely useless um, as I said I did I did pick it carefully out of the cheaper planes that are like around the 20 pound mark because it had this cast Y piece and a brass wheel which kind of implies to me it hasn't been completely cut to the bone and and wooden handles and, and I think that's I think it's proved to be the case um, I've had some other Minotaur stuff, but it's um, things like a vice and stuff like that, and and I'm really pleased with the vice. It's uh, it's um, it's very good for the money. Uh, it's very good. So um, I think that just about covers anything. Everything. Um, as I said, I'm not recommending you buy one of those, but if you, I suppose if you're completely skint and and that's all you can afford if you want to take a bit off a door or smooth a plank then uh, edge of a plank or something then it it, it will work um, these are I think tool station in the UK tool stations own brand um, but all in all um, not too bad I, I've had I've had old planes that have been worse than this. Um, one that springs to mind in particular is an Acorn. You'll you'll see them on eBay. Acorn planes, supposedly, um, they were early Stanleys. It's kind of in England, but that's not strictly true because Acorn was making planes before Stanley came for a couple of years, and um, Stanley bought them out and started making. They kept the Acorn as a as a handyman, and. I've had, I've had a couple of those and they are really horrible. This is better than, than an acorn or a handyman, in my personal opinion, and what I've seen of the way they're made and, and the discrepancies in them. An acorn is an absolutely horrible piece of um, equipment. So all in all, um, usable, a little bit of tweaking. I haven't gone over the top with it. I've just done minor tweaks to it. And um, for 22 quid, I can't really complain. I, I have been like on holiday at friends' houses and things like that where I've not got my tools with me and they've needed a job doing and I've just nipped to the local uh, tool store but just bought cheap chisels or cheap whatever just to get a small job done. And, and for that sort of thing, um, if you bought one of those, a file and an oil stone, it would probably get you by but if you're seriously into your woodwork and you're thinking of taking it up as a hobby I'd spend a bit more money but it's still shocking that that can be made for £22 shipped from China to the UK put in store 20% VAT and it's 22 quid is 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 staggering to me um, so I hope this has been an interest to somebody it's just it's been a bit of fun to me, for me to make just to uh, just to, it's just entertained me a little bit shall we say so uh, thanks for watching and take care